So something else that they're working on is uh, finding people to deal with the quality control measures at a low cost. And what this basically means, even though it wasn't said, um, again, this, this part is more speculative. Um, so they are working toward, towards, and this is more speculation, and you'll see in the next slide why um, I, I said what I said. But I would say what they're also working towards is scalability. So let's just say they now they looked at, let's say, Joburg, um, Cape Town, Kimberley, Durban, um, and so on. Um, and various other cities, you know, Maritzburg, Pretoria, etc., etc. Right. So they go into various cities, and you then say, well, in order to scale this and manage it well, um, the first part, uh, I should probably have combined it, but it's fine. How do we then lower our costs? Right. So we use people who are already are invested. Right. So the first thing is to um, for quality control measures, we have people who are already investors and we basically give them an incentive, so it's basically like a job. Right? So the job's kind of like, we at units, we have units 1 to 10. Um, at unit 10, the tenant's lease is up in two weeks. We would like to, we would like to have someone in this black and easy property. Um, Platform and they've mentioned this within the web, in the, within the webinar. So this is a speculative part. We'd like to have someone who's going to go and have an inspection of unit ten um, to check whether everything is in order, um, whether everything is clean, whether every whether nothing's broken, um, so that we can give that person their deposit back. So you're supposed to get the deposit back when you leave, um, assuming nothing has been broken. So that's kind of the one quality control measure and then their plan there is to say how much well can we then incentivize you so we can give you x amount of money that gets reinvested back into easy property so it's not going to come back in cash but it's going to go into easy properties for you to invest so you can invest that money that easy properties gave you and i would i would believe in that regard in order to make sure that you don't just restore it they would possibly kind of credit you with money that cannot be withdrawn, if that makes sense, directly, um, or something of that sort. They, they'd probably come up with a system. It's not that hard to come up with a system that would, so that would kind of adjust for some, something like that. Um, or maybe it would be charge based um, commission, whatever. Right? So maybe it could be like 50 bucks per day for commission, kind of like easy equity um, referral thing where you get 50 bucks but that 50 bucks goes to those charges so it all kind of works out but it lowers the cost right so that's kind of the one is if we send someone who's nearby right so instead of finding a puppet in Durban then we can fly someone from Joburg to Durban to check on the property um, we simply say well you know Let's find someone who's already in Durban, so we don't have to fly them out. So we say 500 bucks. So even if we pay you 100 bucks, go say we're 400 bucks plus accommodation and everything else, right? Or pictures. So we just send someone who's going to go there. He's going to take the pictures. He's going to submit them. He's going to show that everything is in order. He's going to do essentially that work, and then we're going to pay them maybe what we would have paid the person who's doing the quality check anyway. But we don't have to pay for all the other things their accommodation, um, their, their traveling allowance, whatever the case is. Right? So that's kind of a way to lower the, the cost. And of course, if you lower the cost, the company gets to make money. So part of that money then um, goes back to, to the investor anyway. So it becomes a win-win situation. And the person who's going to do the quality check also gets to make some cash on the side. So everyone gets to make cash on the side as a quality control guy. Um, you're allowing as an investor, so you already have an interest, so you're not going to mess around because you want to make sure that this is all in place, um, not cost the company more money, because um, it would eat into your own pocket anyway. So if you arrive, you're going to make sure that everything is intact, and if it isn't, you can afford the bank. 
So it's a win-win situation for everybody. On top of that, um, and this wasn't mentioned, but I think that it's in the work as well, is if we have to fly someone from Joburg, we might say someone will come through next week, or two, two weeks time for quality control check. Um, however, if, 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 it's, if we can just hold it as like a, an app or a section of music properties where someone is interested, you can click the vacancy, um, quickly drive into Durban, you can literally just be like, um, we'll find someone on Monday um, who can come through. And someone on Monday comes through at a particular time, we've cut, we've cut time, we've cut money, and it all just works out. So again, I believe one of the other reasons why we're looking at Durban in Cape Town is probably because two busy cities, um, but also for the scale of the series as well. Again, that part is, is, is not fact, it's, it's, it's my opinion on it. But in terms of the, the lowering of costs, it's been mentioned, but how it's going to get done goes only as far as that looking at the opportunities of, of, of trying to get people to go through and check, and check whether um, everything is still intact and so on. That's the factual part that we said in, in the webinar. Um, and then I've derived um, certain implications from there. So so that, that's kind of my view plus <laughs> a fact according to um, the partner. Now whether it actually happens and how long it happens and how long it takes before that happens, again I believe it would it would depend on us, right? If there's a high demand, and again, I think one of the ways for them to see that there's a high demand is for them to invest properties and for them to constantly hit over 100% funding properties. I think, again, if they were to hit like 150% um, in funding in each property, that would indicate to them that they at some point they can lift second property just like they kind of did with the Monroe and the, the Kikuyu and I think that could have been their first attempt to say let's see whether we can try and get two properties which have overlapped to 100% um, at a time and also to kind of see if people are interested in, in in not the manual, the, the exchange manual, to see whether people are interested in both and it's kind of like the market research. So my hope is that um, it, it continues in that manner and gets to a point where every property is getting 100% um, funding so that we can kind of grow the, the, the scalability that much quicker and just kind of open up options as investors. So anyway, that was just my view with some facts in there. Again, you can fact check it. Go back to the webinars. Um, there's, I believe, a webinar on green, the green park, if I'm not mistaken. Um, green park or green something. There's a webinar on there. Uh, I think from a couple of months ago, there's a webinar on the Monroe, if I'm not mistaken. I believe, I may be mistaken, there's a webinar on Polo Field, um, but I may be mistaken on that. But there are, I, I believe, three if not more webinars based on easy, easy property. So you can go back and just go through it. Um, at, at some point, they, 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 they ask questions that you think so soft, they're obvious, but again, you need to, you need to do it because some people might not see this obvious. Um, at some point, it seems like the questions are the same questions from other webinars, and it's understandable. But again, control measures, um, that's kind of the aim, and, and I think it's a good its a good move on the point. So anyway, thanks for tuning in this long, and see you later.